All right, so we are now live on YouTube. I'm gonna start recording and then we'll get started. Okay. Hi everyone and welcome. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon for Drawing Live Uncensored with John Cuneo and Joe Chardello. This week, the Society of Illustrators, along with several of our friends, are hosting some great online programs. Even though Mocha Arts Fest was not able to happen this year, we felt it was important to highlight our comic and cartoon arts community. So we created this week of virtual events along with publishers and creators. This presentation is being brought to you in collaboration with Fantagraphics. And I'd like to give a special thanks to Emily Silva for all their help over the past couple of weeks. Thank you to everyone who is participating. The positive response has been overwhelming. If you have any questions during the session, please just put them in the chat and we will, we will answer them as many as we can. Um, it's also going to be streaming live on YouTube. So if you have questions there, you can pop them in that stream and I'll bring them over into this chat. So I'd like to now introduce John and Joe. John is an American illustrator whose work has appeared in many major publications, including The New Yorker, Esquire, Sports Illustrated, and The Atlantic Monthly. His awards include 10 silver medals from the Society of Illustrators. In 2014, he was awarded the Society's prestigious Hamilton King Award. His books include Neurotic, Not Waving, But Drawing, and his latest book is Coping Skills, a collection of hilariously abnormal and depraved helpful drawings, in quotes. And Joe Chardello has had illustrations featured in the National, the New York Times Book Review, The New Yorker, Rolling Stone, Time Magazine, and many other publications. Among his awards are four silver medals from the Society of Illustrators. In 2016, he was awarded the Society's prestigious Hamilton King Award. His latest book, A Fistful of Drawings, is a gorgeous graphic memoir. Joe Chardello weaves together his Italian family history and the mythology of the American West while playing homage to the classic Westerns of the 50s and 60s. So Joe and John, if you want to get started. Thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, well, Lindsay. Joe, I'm going to start drawing just because that's when I'm less nervous, OK? Okay, well, that's what we're here for, to, to watch you yeah. draw. Yeah, that was going to be, yeah. Do we, um, before you get too far along, do we want to talk about uh, materials and kind of get that out of the way? Because I know people are always curious about uh, pens and paper and that sort of thing. Sure. What are you, uh, what are you drawing with right now? This is a, uh, a uniball um, of, of I don't know if I've got this upright. Just a, just a, something you can buy like in, a, in an office supply place. It's a, it's a, it's a uniball. I think it's called a deluxe uniball, deluxe micron or something like that. Um, and it's a, not a micron, a uh, uniball deluxe uh, uh, rollerball or something. It's um, that you know they make these things now for security reasons. I think for check writing and things, they make a lot of these pens with what they call archival ink, you know, and, uh, and it is, it's waterproof and it's, uh, it sticks around. And, uh, I don't know, sometimes I go back and forth now in drawings. I'm not always, uh, I'm not sticking to one pen during the course of a drawing, but I'm starting out with this one mm -hmm. and a very shaky line. <laughs> yeah. 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 Because I'm nervous. <laughs> well, yeah. you know how it is. Sure. sure. Well, this is not something you do every day, right? Having uh, no this having this part right here. You. Yeah. No. 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 Not with people watching me and not trying to sort of sound coherent and stuff at the same time. But it's okay. I'm happy to hear your voice. It's comforting, Joe. You're comforting to hear. You have a very comforting sort of a bedside manner about you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. 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 I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that. But yeah, yeah. maybe I went into the wrong profession. No, 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 I'm not saying that either. Don't uh, don't draw conclusions. I'm just saying that when it comes to having somebody in my ear during this, I can't think of anybody else I'd like. So, okay. 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 Now, now, what kind of paper are you drawing on? Is this from a sketchbook? It seems like it is. Yeah, this is just uh, I've ripped this out of a Canson. Uh, 
out of a Canson uh, watercolor uh, pad. Okay. Um, one yeah. of these things, you know, it's just, yeah. just it's, it's, uh, I don't, you know, Montfal, Montfal, Canson. I think you draw with this on this yes. stuff too, don't you? I do. I, I draw on that as well. It's, it's, um, it seems to take the pen nicely. It's not the greatest watercolor paper. It's kind of a student grade paper, but um, it suits my purposes. Um, the drawing is always more key. Uh, and I'll yeah. deal with how, how it takes the watercolor later. So. Um, right. Do you, do, you, do you really do feel that way that the, that the watercolor, it, it's, not, it's not exactly, um, it's more of a student level thing? Because uh, I, I well, wonder it, about that. It's marketed as, as a student grade paper. Oh. Um, but that's, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I guess I'm, I'm, uh, I didn't realize that. And now I'm, uh, <laughs> now I think uh, I can't, uh, now I realize why I felt so comfortable with it, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. oh. um, yeah. And you're right. I'm with you. Um, it's about for, for us, right. It's about the line and the pen seems to, on this thing, at least it seems to kind of want to stay on top of the, uh, want to state uh it it's it comes off very black it has a it the uh it's not too thirsty it's uh you know it feels just just kind of right but yeah but i change uh, sometimes i prefer moleskin i i usually do my 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 illustration finals on you know plain old arches or something but you use this for your finals right uh i do yeah and pretty much everything um, mm -hmm. i do like i used to use hot press a hot press paper but the surfaces changed so so frequently that it just it just drove me crazy um so you know there's never it's, it's no such thing as the perfect paper um, not for both not for both especially i think not for not for both watercolor and drawing and um and i i you know i guess that'll be our you know our our, our search forever but uh but yeah, there is no such thing. And you've talked a lot about over the years and during our phone conversations about the fact that um, you think that the quality of a lot of these things has changed over the course of, uh, of our friendship and uh, over the years, right? Oh, yeah. But are you sure about that? Or is that just you and your sort of, you know, um, anxiety generated um, sort of uh, opinion? Do you or, or are you really sure? It's definitely it's de it's that as well, uh, for sure. I mean, I, I get obsessive about this stuff, but um, but no, I, I'm not the only one that that, I, that has said that uh, surfaces change, the sizing they use changes. I think the quality has gone down in uh, in general with art supplies because no, let's face it, nobody's buying art supplies anymore. You know, everyone's working digitally, and uh, you know, and the, the fewer few of us there are that that are actually working on paper with pens and paint, and um, it's uh, I, I don't think it's uh, it, it makes sense for manufacturers to uh, to make the product anymore, right? And, and or if you can find an art supply store to sell it. Yeah, well, uh, somebody told me the other day that they said you know I meant they asked about paper and uh, something with my sketchbooks, which are mostly on Moleskine, or uh, are we gonna, are we gonna, are we gonna say Moleskine or are we gonna go with the Italian pronunciation? And if we are, you've got to say it first. How do you say it? I, I don't say, I say Moleskine. Okay, Moleskine. I don't even, you don't say even go with so, Oh, okay. Because, uh, I've you heard know. Mole, Moleskine. Yeah, there you go. That's but, what I'm afraid uh, that uh, you're but making actually, it. But actually, I think that, I think that the book uh, really is French, so. Oh, you know, they may be made in Italy now. I'm not sure, but I think it started in France. Um, uh, I'm seeing a lot of questions here. Um, Jesus Christ. I've been ignoring, uh, but. Um, and I thought we were so fascinating there for that first segment <laughs> that I just can't imagine if people want to interrupt us, but go I, ahead. Here's one. Does John have an idea before he starts or, or creates as he goes? And or does he draw a preliminary sketch before he starts his final daily art? That's from uh, Jack At Atkinson. I know Jack Atkinson or used to. He, I think we were friends uh, a long time ago. I mean, not that we're enemies now. I mean, we're still on good terms, I think. Um, uh, uh, I don't, with sketchbooks, I start just like I started here. 
I, I usually, I don't have anything really in mind. I have a, I'm just drawing a figure. Um, and as I'm drawing, um, and not to be too sort of like, you know, highfalutin about it or, 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 uh, or pretentious about it, but I try not to sort of have anything get in the way of that. Once I get a figure done, I say, okay, now this, this thing right here, I'm aware of certain parameters and certain obligations I've got for this little event we're doing. And one of them is that it was promoted as an uncensored conversation. So I, and I, you know, and they were alluding to the fact that sometimes in my sketchbooks, there are, you know, there are sexual sort of uh, um, scenarios going on. And so I, I reconciled myself to knowing, to saying that, yeah, well, okay, there's gonna be, there is gonna be some sexual element to this, which is why I'm gonna be drawing this uh, right now. And this will not be something that's, you know, uh, so brace yourself. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so no, I, 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 when, I'm, when I'm just sort of sketchbooking, um, I uh, try not to. I, I, I let a figure or, a, or something I'm drawing sort of dictate. And then I try to assign myself uh, a, a kind of a discipline for, uh, as a kind of discipline, I try to make myself say, okay, I'm gonna have to come up with some sort of an idea, um, make, this, make this into a picture, not just a figure. And, uh, and so that's, that's, that's what I do. Um, and, uh, and hey, you would what think that's been, been waiting for. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, you would think that, you know, as many times as I've drawn that, I would have done a better one, but I'm going to have to sort of, uh, uh, and I like to, I, I'm, what I'm going to try to do is, is loosen up a little bit and let this, uh, I want to have, I want to take the attention away from that. Uh, and I thought maybe I'd have, you know, I know enough that I think I'm going to have a woman and a, uh, and a man in this and maybe uh, 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 an animal or something. So I do know that much that I have some sort of agenda. Um, yeah, what's the next question? So well, I have a question um, it's in a similar vein. Um, how much uh, like reference would you use, if at all, for, for the things you do for yourself? Do you, do you start sometimes with, with a piece of scrap and then take off from that? Or, or is it all completely out of your head? No, I do, I do just what you said. Sometimes, I'm, you know, I like to think of this as just practice. And, uh, and often I will you know, come across a picture of a dog or, or, a, or a tree or, or a, you know, a not, not usually a person. I don't, have, I, don't have the, I don't have the patience to be doing that, but... Um, uh, but, uh, and, and I will, I will say, God, I'm, I want to put that in a sketchbook. And so I will literally sit down and, you know, I mean, just draw that for practice. Like we do just say, I want to make a good drawing out of this guy playing the piano or whatever, but instead of like maybe drawing his face, I'll put another, another head on it or something like that, or a guitarist or something. Oh, I don't really see that pose, uh, uh that often, or I, or, I, you know, I'm not really good at drawing somebody playing a saxophone and I'll come across an image and I'll say, well, I'm going to just doodle that thing out. And then I will try from there to extrapolate from that and I'll have something, you know, and again, again, these are not sort of like real insightful, laden with, 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 uh, with interpretation sort of drawings, but I may have something coming out of that saxophone. You know, I remember drawing a frog once and saying, and then I wound up having to play a, a saxophone and his tongue was coming out of the bell of the saxophone. Um, that's exact. That's an example of saying, okay, no, uh, I wanted to, I wanted to draw a frog head and then I thought well maybe I'll have him holding something and then I thought how about a saxophone and then I thought make this into something even as inane or as you know un, uh, un illogical as it as it as it may be uh, so yeah that's uh, I do start sometimes with reference um, not not often well, one thing I really admire about what you do is how you're able to compose a scene of of people a group of people in an environment in a room with furniture, and um, and everything is everyone is convincingly placed, even with your loose line and uh, kind of meandering through the thing. Um, it's all it's all somehow a very believable scene, and um, it it amazes me that you can do that kind of thing out of your head. I don't draw out of my head hardly at all. I mean, I may I may doodle a, a head or a face, but um, but for the most part, I have to have scrap. I have to work from scrap. Um, you know, ninety nine percent of the time. Um, 
So, you right. Know, what, what, you know, just like briefly take, take us through that process of, of doing, doing a whole um, scenario of people in, a, in an environment. Um, um, well, if those aren't for, if that's not for a real job, I don't work it out first. I, 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 there was a couple of years ago, I realized I can't do that myself. I can't put somebody in a room. And I worked on a little sketchbook. Let me show it to you, uh, if I can find it here. Um, I think maybe right here. I, here it is. I took one of these little moleskins and I said, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just go through magazines and draw pictures of rooms and then draw my people in them. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, sort of an exercise. What? It's sort of yes, an exercise. It was, it was exactly that. It was just like, I'm, I'm afraid of rooms. I don't know how to do them. I don't know how to draw people on a bed in a room with a window behind them, even these little simple things. So I went through, I, you know, and bought a couple of magazines and said, okay, I'm going to start drawing these windows and mantelpieces and stuff, and then, and then put someone, some people in them. Um, they're smaller versions of what you're talking about, but... Uh, uh, yeah. But that's what I mean. And, and, and that, that, you know, a lot of my problems with drawing is, is, uh, is fear. I'm afraid I can't draw something. I remember talking to Barry Blit about that and some other friends of ours and how, you know, how that prohibits me from even coming up with certain sort of concepts and ideas and stuff is because I'm afraid I can't draw it. And I hate having that hold me back. And so I've, uh, you know, I've, I've tried to kind of, uh, uh, work on that a little bit but so and and, and in sketchbooks um when i don't when i do that now without reference it's one at a time it's like okay i'm going to put someone in a chair and then i'm going to have maybe somebody you know standing behind that chair or a couch or something like that i like i enjoy doing that now but um but it's all you know piece by piece it's not like the look and i say oh this is going to be a gathering and this is going to be how it looks it's in it's in it's, it's all in part with the, with the way that I'm doing this, which is, you know, sort of putting something together and trying to, you know, figure it out as I go. And I'm also holding my, my hand here a little bit. Uh, when I'm nervous, um, it helps me to steady my hand a little as I, as I do this. Um, Rob Stolzer says, how do you keep the liveliness in your work as you go from a sketch to a finish? Well, that's the, uh, that's the problem, isn't it, Joe? I mean, no, that, uh, yeah, that's you know. the, biggest, the biggest problem, uh, I think that we, we can kind right. of confront. Yeah, yeah, I mean, do, do you, do, you don't give really tight sketches, do you? Um, my sketches have gotten um, uh, tighter in recent years. Uh, just because I, for the main reason is that I don't want to, uh, I don't want to have to redo stuff. And I want, I want the client to know, have a, a, a very good idea what they're going to get from me. Right. Um, but um, I mean, I do them, I draw, my sketches are drawn directly uh, with pen on a, on a piece of tracing paper. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and 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 once that's approved, how close do you uh, do you adhere to that? And how and uh, do you do you draw it uh, on a light box or? Uh, yeah. Then I'll, um, you know, if this is this is if it's a, if it's a job, if it's an assignment, right. then I'll put it on the light box, and lightly pencil it off, and then go go back to my drawing board and and um, and uh, you know go in with a pen and ink. Um, if I'm drawing just for myself. I don't do any preliminary sketches, just go directly yeah. with a pen on, on, on a good Yeah, pen. and it shows, you know, and that's why they're so beautiful. And I think that, you know, the, to answer Rob's question, you know, not to be presumptuous and ask answer for everybody, but all of us who draw struggle with that, struggle with that process. Um, uh, some people uh, give very, uh, and I, uh, some people give very, very loose sketches. So they're, so they're not, um, they're not, compelled to follow those as closely in a final. And then there's the other rationale, which you were talking about, which is that just to avoid any trouble, just to avoid any fucking trouble, I'm going to give a tight sketch so they know what they're getting and I don't want to deal with any kind of changes after the fact, right? Right, right. 
Yeah, yeah. I remember Joe, uh, uh, our, our friend Jack Unruh, um, uh, never spent more than a few minutes on his sketches. They were almost, you know, they were, they were not stick figures, but they were just very doodly. Just a couple of circles and lines and some writing to indicate what's what and stuff. He, 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 he left all the, all the pleasure and all the drawing in the final art. And, uh, and you had to kind of trust, um, you know, he asked the client to trust him on that. And I loved that. Yeah. He was so I, smart. I, I do recall seeing some pen, pencil sketches of his that were that were fairly uh, detailed. I I thought. Well, maybe that was for Pen you know his more corporate work for his small for his editorial quarter page things and stuff. They were uh, they were you know. I mean, I think Joe was, uh, Jack was like you know. Listen, if I'm going to do this, and it's going to take me this amount of time, I'm going to have some fun with this. You're going to sort of trust me. And here, this is going to be a pickup truck, and this is going to be a you know, a guy fishing and stuff like that. But maybe, yeah, maybe for his, you know, uh, may, I, he probably couldn't get away with that for his uh, uh, annual reports and that kind of a thing. Right. So, um, well, is it possible a, a reptile may make an appearance in this drawing at, at some point? Oh, Jesus. I, you know, it, 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 the one thing, can I tell you one thing about, about sketchbooks is that, is, that, is that one of the joys of sketchbooks, Joe, is that there's no fucking art director. Can I just mention that? Was, was that a question or is that? That was a question. Was that, that a written in question? A it wasn't a demand. It was a question. It was written in or was it yours? No, no, it was my question. Oh, great. <clears throat> Thanks for that. Well, I, okay, the, yeah, reason yeah. I, the reason I mention it is because I know you have a fondness for reptiles. And I know you, I know you have owned as pets snakes. And mm -hmm. uh, I don't think you've ever owned an alligator. But uh, I haven't. Uh, no, I do know you had you've had a number of snakes uh, over the course of your life. Yes, and you even brought one with you from when you moved from Denver uh, to Woodstock, right? In the car with you. Yes, I had a python that I moved python. Cr cross country. I mean, well, you know, you it's a python sounds like you know it's a massive animal. It was a, it was several feet long, but it was, and uh, but yeah, and I. That's I uh, pretty big. Yeah, and uh, I, I had a little stupid heat lamp in the back of this old Toyo used Toyota and I drove cross country and, you know, had to smuggle him into, into uh, motel rooms. I mean, it sounds like a dirty joke, but, you know, I don't want to call ahead and say, hey, I'm going to run a room and can I bring my Python, you know? Um, uh, so, yeah, I did that. I remember being in Indianapolis, uh, it was freezing, stopping for gas and, and, uh, and realizing that, my God, I haven't had the heat on and the, the heat, the hot rock that I had in the back of the, that seat of the Toyota with a, with a python curled up around it in a while and stuff. And in the morning, I thought I'd have to smuggle it out. And it just it was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, 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 was, I grew up being allergic to, uh, to uh, well, this, I fucked this up. Um, uh, I grew up being allergic to animals and uh, with fur. And so, and so uh, yeah, it, uh, I, snakes and stuff were, were, you know, easier to deal with. I was that kind of a kid, you know, everything everything with fur or dander sort of made me sneeze. I walked around with a Kleenex, you know, in my back pocket. It's a real, that's, that's a, a, ladies love that when you're in junior high school and you're the guy with the, with the, with a wadded up Kleenex in your back pocket and, or, or maybe a real handkerchief even. I think my dad's handkerchief and stuff. Yeah, they can't get enough of that. Yeah, it's so, a good look. It's a good look. I think I've even done that at the Society of Illustrator openings, which is, uh, you know, I, I, haven't, I haven't grown out of it yet. But. Um, but you yeah. spent time um, as a kid in Florida, right? Yeah, not as a kid. Um, we drove. We we uh, we. My family moved down there um, uh, as uh, when I was between my senior, my junior, and senior year of high school, uh, which was something that I, you know, still have not forgiven them for. Yeah. Uh, but because you don't want to go from the suburbs of New Jersey to. Uh, to uh, subtropical Florida, but yes, that's what we did. And uh, but then I, you know, that's where your uh, your love of reptiles came in. No, no, that happened. Florida. You know, there was <laughs> there, there's a terrible little state park in Jersey called Watchung State Park. They call it. Oh, I yeah. think it's called. You know, you heard of that? Yeah. I used to take my bike up there and look for snakes all the time. Just right. me, just just alone, pathetically with the uh, you know with a with a 
with a sandwich I made at home on a three-speed bike, chugging up the hills there and look under rocks for a day. Um, uh, that was, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's sad. It's like some sort of a French movie or something with a lonely little boy sort of, uh, you know, not realizing that, you know, you could spend your whole life looking for snakes and watch on reservation and you have, you have better luck in the backyard looking for a garter snake down on your block or something. But anyhow, now you're making me sad. <laughs> Sorry. Mm. Um, let's see, uh, let me look at some of these questions. Um, uh, does, does John, uh, oh, where did it go? Um, does John ever draw first in pencil to lay out his image or does he always draw straight in ink? Well, um, this is uh, uh, kind of what we were talking about. For, 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 for you and I are the same. Um, we don't usually do uh, working our free drawing, our sketchbook, our personal work, whatever pretentious term you want to use, um, is, is, is usually um, freehand. Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't draw much in pencil at all. Um, I tend to, for some reason, work out caricatures in pencil, um, uh, but there are a lot of unused pencils here. I, I usually work even my rough sketches uh, uh, for, 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 for jobs and things are done in pen, like you do it, Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, I, what are we, we're just more comfortable with pens, aren't we, than pencils, it seems like. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I am. I mean, uh, I don't know how common that is. Well, here's, here's an interesting question from uh, uh, Kent Hall. Uh, John's work is so willfully perverse, lots of sex, but it's not hyper-masculine, not heteronormative. Where does this come from? And does it make you more dateable? It makes me gay, um, <laughs> and, and I think. And so uh, let's just leave that, no. I, I, uh... <laughs> does it make me dateable? Was that the term? Yeah. Didn't we already cover that? Dateable. Um, well, the handkerchief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, uh, normative, what, in what, in what, what, what was that term? What normative, what normative? What was Heteronormative. Normative? Hetero, it's not heteronormative. Yeah, no, no. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm. Uh, I, I like to represent uh, uh, for personal reasons um, that we won't get into in this podcast. I, I like to represent um, uh, different genders um, and uh, different levels of attraction and stuff, or you know, repulsion or something. I, I, honestly, I, I, uh, I'm interested in that stuff and in in, uh, in the dynamics of say a couple, uh, two men, and with one is you know, attracted to, to the other, but the other one is, is, is passive. Uh, the passivity and the, uh, and, and the, uh, and the uh, vagaries of desire and lust, I think are just fascinating. Hmm. Yeah. Um, David Ap Apatoff is here. Oh God. And he says, how can John be insecure and at the same time be the most fearless illustrator in America? <laughs> <laughs> That's, David writes shit like that just to sort of know that it's going to make me incredibly uncomfortable. Um, insecurity does not come from um, uh, from uh, my 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 drawing stuff and things. Uh, insecurity comes from uh, a long time ingrained sort of uh, uh, reactions to childhood trauma and um, and a uh, and a well justified feeling of self loathing. Uh, which you know, if I had time, I could give you a million reasons why. But, uh, but yes, I don't know, David, that's a rhetorical question. And uh, um, Joe, Joe, can we ask something? Can I ask something about you? No, this is about you. Mm. Oh, okay, that, so that's a no, essentially. <laughs> you just told me no. Okay, we're, go ahead. We're, we're actually promoting your book here. And, and I see Robert Festino is on, uh, has joined the group here and um, he says you have an affinity for tubular things. Is this another one of those uh, heteronormative sort of uh, <laughs> illusions? Uh, now, Robert because... Fascino, a brilliant designer who designed uh, John's book right. and, your, and your other book. Um, uh, uh, yeah, my first one, Neurotic. Robert, Robert Fascino is a, uh, got, you know, won the uh, Art Director of the Year, a career award from the Society of Illustrators. He's, he's, he's been the design director for everything from, I think it was Men's Journal or, or uh, 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 Entertainment Weekly. Uh, uh, he just revamped 
um, Variety magazine into something beautiful. Bef uh, I think that was his last stop in L.A. before he went into another job. But uh, but yeah, he's brilliant. And having him work on my uh, on my on my book, design my book was was a privilege. He's he's an old friend, but he's also, you know, this brilliant designer. He, he, he I, I, I want you I can't wait for you to see it, Joe, because he made decisions that an illustrator really wouldn't make decisions in terms of in terms of how he wanted his own work. Uh, picture uh, presented or showcased or whatever he um, and uh, you know very surprising stuff that I just love and that was why I was so happy to have him involved so if uh, just a shout out to anybody if you can get like Robert Festino to design your your collection of cartoons or illustrations for free um, <laughs> you know that's yeah. that's what you want to do I'm sure you like that Robert yeah it didn't cost me a penny uh, a couple of an original and you know some emails and a lot of, but uh, yeah. Anyhow, something tubular. I got something, for, can we just put this out there? Uh, maybe this has to be edited out, but I've got something tubular right here for Robert Festino. So, okay. <laughs> By the Next way, question, please. the book is called Coping Skills and it is available for pre-order. Uh, yes. From Fantagraphics and also from your, is a, a local bookstore in Woodstock, is that correct? Yes, there's a local, bookstore called uh, the Golden Notebook here in Woodstock and they are uh, they are you know you can I can I they're going to ship them out and you can order it through them and if you order it through them I'm I promise to do a little uh, a little simple you know rudimentary doodle uh, and, and sign it I can't do that with the with the ones that are uh, 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 bought from uh, from Fanta but you know um uh, but yeah, and you can support a, a lovely local independent bookstore at the same time. So, John, I think your drawing is shifting. No, oh, sorry. Okay. It is. Thank you. Um, um, I'm going to start. Link. I see a link that the society posted. Um, golden notebook. Dot right. I don't know the actual address of it but indielite.org i-n-d-i-e-l-i-t-e.org i'm sure if you can, you know if can you John talk a bit about his love of sullivan's and clay's work yeah well, we should talk about uh, your heroes you know your your drawing heroes yeah um, I, I would like to do that, and I would also like to hear uh, that uh, about yours. Um, but my drawing heroes, you know, I just drew some of them for that new uh, for that new publication, uh, public uh, uh, public eye. Um, uh, and you know, among the ones that I drew were the same ones that uh, some overlaps between you and I, like Egon Schiele and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, Clay. I, I grew up you know, I think we all started out with Mad Magazine stuff and things, right? Hey, do you, do, do, when you, when, do you find um, your, uh, uh, later, as we get on in life here, that some of your uh, earlier influences don't do it for you as much, and, and there's other ones that you didn't appreciate when you were, when you were younger that now you're, you're you really get off on? Has that um, ever happened to you? Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> my early influences, I, I think still, uh, I still have the, the, the same fondness for, um, but there are artists who I appreciate much more now. Um, like for exam example, Picasso, um, uh, I'm just so enamored with now, his, his etchings particularly. Yeah. Um, etchings from the thirties and also his late period etchings and the, just the freedom that's in those, those things. Um, which I didn't pay a lot of attention to when I was younger, but um, yeah, I I, I I I feel that way about uh, um, you know uh, even illustrators. I wasn't a big Ronald Searle fan when I was younger, mm -hmm. and uh, now I you know now I think he's sort of godlike, and uh, and I I don't know what it was that that switched on for me, um, but I found his style too florid and too sort of decorative early on and I, I wasn't I don't think I was able to appreciate it. um and now um I think of him as you know maybe the best of the of the of the satirical draftsman out there and I am just astounded by the chances he takes he took and the uh and you know the uh the the just the uh, uh 
uh, ambition of some of those drawings and, and those cityscapes and those travel illustrations and things. Yeah. You know, he'd have people in a ski lodge and he'd have the mountain, there'd be the skiers in the foreground, in the background, people in a clubhouse, people waiting, families uh, or people at an airport and, and uh, there'd be planes taking off in the background and there'd be ch squabbling children and, and, and fat tourists and, you know, and, and pilots walking by and things. The whole thing just amazes me how he did not talk himself out of that stuff and say, no, 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 I can't be drawing all this crap all at once. He, he would do it, you know? And, and it, it all had this life to it. Oh, that was a lot. Was just there was never a sense that, you know, that he was he had stiffened up or something. Um, I I, uh, I wish there was videos of him working. Uh, do you do you there search was a, the Internet? Isn't there a video of him um, having um, champagne while he works? Well, there is that, you know, he's 94 or something and he's and he's sitting at his table. Uh, with a with a bottle of champagne next to him, and he's holding it up and saying something like, "I think the uh, he finds the bubbles help him or something." <laughs> but but I, uh, I got the I got the impression that was a regular thing, you know. That yes, was for that uh, for that video. Yeah, no, it, it is. I think it is. I mean, that was he talked about that all the time. I just want to see him. You know, we're all such nerds. I want to see him do what I'm doing here. Right. Uh, this is. This is not going to be, you know, a revelation to people. This me drawing this this crap, but to see Ronald Searle, Ronald Searle doing that, would be just like, you know, the Holy Grail or something. I think I once remember seeing a, a, a David Levine video of him making a caricature, and I think it was coincidentally, I think it was of Picasso. And these things are like, you know, I, w I wish. I wish I could find them or see them again or whatever. And I wish there was a, a, a Searle working. Um, uh, uh, you know, there's a little snippet of him with a with maybe a uh, uh, one of his uh, fountain pens or something. But it's not not enough. It's just a seconds of it or something. Watching him hatch back and forth like that mm -hmm. to uh, get that kind of hatchy sort of look or whatever. Yeah. Mm. My, my first exposure to Ronald Searle was when I was a young kid and when the um, Magnificent Men and Their Flying Machines, that, that film came out. I remember uh, I went to see it, um, I guess with my parents in a movie theater and, and he had illustrated all the, the title sequence to the film. And I, I was just blown away by, by seeing his drawings and, and watercolor and, you know, large on a, on a big movie screen. Yeah. Um, and they were animated, you know, like limited kind of animation, just, just beautiful just, stuff. Right, right, yeah. So I, was, I was a fan of his from, from very early on. And oh, then he sweet. would often do TV guide covers too, which, you know, uh, was something that I was able to see on a regular basis. Right, right. Was he much of a, well, he got like, he could get a likeness, couldn't he? Yeah, yeah. Not like you, but he could do it. Um, I'm not kidding. Uh, uh, yeah, hey, hey, you know, we got while, while we're here talking about tools and things, um, can we talk about repeatographs and the fact that their quality may have been gone down over the years and, that's, and that you still use those? Uh, and yeah, can you I mean, I, I, uh, it was interesting to see a, a, a post the other day that um, uh, Gary Panter apparently uh, also still uses uh, repeatographs. Um, I don't know too many people that still do, but um, but yeah, sadly the quality, uh, at least to me, and I know I'm uh, obsessive about this this stuff, but uh, the quality really uh, went downhill. On they, you know, they they tend to snag now. Um, I like I I need to be able to draw up as yes. well as uh, in different directions, and and the the point just snags in the paper, and you know that's useless as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to desperately keep, keep the, the old ones that I have in, in working order. Um, but yeah, uh, the new ones yeah. that stay within the last five years or so, the new ones are really suck. Um, I, I have a, a friend who who's, um, gets her microns, which she draws with. Um, she has, she gets a, uh, uh, the, uh, a kind of micron that's not available to the public. They supply her with, she doesn't buy her own pens. Really? 
because she's got enough followers and she's uh, that uh, Micron supplies her with these pens that aren't available on the, uh, you know, Wow. In the Blick catalog or something. How come you're still paying for your repeatographs? Is the question I have. <laughs> That's what I want to know, Joe. Because you know. I'm one of the three people that still buy them, you know? They got to right, right. pay for them. God, you know, I read a, uh, a little bit about uh, something about a new book uh, uh, about um, David Hockney. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about your beautiful portrait of him, which I think is one of your best pieces ever. And uh, and um, and uh, he was talking about seeing a uh, a Klimt uh, drawing, and 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 he was telling this author who who, who published this book based on their con recent conversations that the uh, that the uh, he was talking about how beautiful it was, how he had like red and. Uh, uh, lines and I think they were blue lines in the drawing and how they interweaved in the drawing to tease out this form or something. It was a figure drawing or something. And the author, um, after this conversation, went and found the drawing. And I know that you and I are both this inks. Uh, this ink's not drying in time. Um, uh, you and I are both, you know, Klimt fans. And uh, I might like him more than Egon Schiele myself. Uh, but. Um, uh, and how the author was struck by the fact that it was an incredibly erotic um, drawing, um, you know, and the first thing you look at is, 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 is the first thing you see when you look at it is that you don't see the, you know, <laughs> the, uh, the, the interplay between the red and the blue lines. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's, it just, it, it, the point he got from that was that, you know, Hockney's not looking at these things uh, through, uh, through the lens of eroticism. He's looking at it through a, you know, how the hell did he do that? type of thing. And I think you and I are that way too sometimes. Um, you know, I'm not struck as much often as much when I look at some drawings and even with my own stuff, I'm more concerned about getting the drawing right. And, uh, and, uh, and incidentally, oh, there's, you know, there's some, there's some sex going on and stuff, but it's, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, Hockney just des describes himself, himself as a, as a, as a sybarite, sybarite. And, uh, and, you know, and that's, and he, but he's 83. And, uh, you know, I don't know how, how sybaratic you can be at that age, but God bless him. But, you know, he's still talking about how Klimt got this great effect with these lines and is ignoring the fact that the woman is masturbating in the picture, you know. <laughs> and can you imagine how, you know, the, the, how it was, what, what it must have been like in those studios with, with these models doing that, pleasuring themselves while you're yeah. sitting there with a pen in your hand, uh, pencil in your hand, trying to capture that and stuff. I, I love the idea. Uh, I, love, I love all of it. I love the idea that that's happening in the, in the uh, in the studio and at the same time the artist is trying to kind of concentrate on a certain sort of interplay between you know what the right hand is doing and what the head is how the head is tilting back and stuff right, right. yeah but it's just that that's not unlike a day at your place i i would imagine oh yeah oh absolutely yeah yeah, yeah not yeah. so much these days but you know well earlier that, days, oh, I, yeah yeah must, that's wonderful wonderful to think back on that stuff i'm glad you have those memories yeah good times yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, a lot of frippitograph comments here. Yeah, you see? People want to know. People want to know how you keep yours clean. I, uh, Victor says I need to hire my voice out for Fauci parodies. Um, okay. Thanks, Vic. <laughs> yeah, Vic should talk about voices. <laughs> You should really. That's a. That's a. Don't don't be throwing stones, Victor. My voice is getting hoarser uh, uh, each day as I, I get older. I told you that I think it's sexy, and uh, <laughs> I think, uh, and I think that you know, uh, Fauci parodies are 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 not the only um, way that you're going to be able to use that voice. So excited to see. Yes, I that's know. Victor. Compliment, that's Victor. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. That, that's Victor's thing, right? Where here we are scrambling to try to fill air time and stuff. And Victor's, you know, coming up with a bad joke like that. Like, yeah, you ought to be just a comment. So even a question. Yes. Um, yeah. uh, Alice Simpson would like to see your watercolors. So uh, that's a good idea. What are you actually using? I'm using an unholy mess of, uh, of dried up um, Cotman's and Windsor Newton's and stuff. Uh, and uh, they're pants, you know, squeezed pants, into oh. these boxes. Uh, 
there's 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 all kinds of look at that that's a bunch of pubic hair on that one i don't even know how the fuck that got in there um and uh, uh but yeah that's what it is just various things and then i uh, but i only use like you know i try not to use much of them because i i I'm, I'm i don't know much about color i don't have any kind of formal training so most of those colors are like untouched i just kind of think that it looks cool to have all those boxes filled up but yeah cottonins winsor newtons a couple of daniel smiths i think in there it changes i've even got an old ancient um thing of pelicans here that uh, that i kind of dug out that i'm for some reason using a little bit of these days i'm not sure why i did that but but it's uh, but that was something i didn't even know anything about watercolors and i was doing fine with pelicans ever since i changed you know 25 years ago i've been scrambling and trying to figure out what the hell well i think you you've come a, uh, a long way with your colors i mean i remember you being um more Careful. intimidated about uh, <laughs> about your your use of color and um oh yeah you know yeah um, they're beautiful now i mean you're really doing great stuff Oh yeah, I, you know I don't know. Um, I, I now I, I I'm less you know I'm just not as inhibited I guess. Um, but uh, I still, you know, I still have that thing about not having gone to arts arts really learned this stuff in art school. I did a did a year or so at a at an art school, but uh, we didn't. Nobody touched watercolors or anything. I kind of just learn this on my own and looking at people and saying, you know, how does that person do that or this kind of person is trial and error. Um. Uh, I think that's yeah. how most people learn, though. You think? You know, I, don't, I don't think. Yeah, I. I mean, I, I don't remember being taught, you know, watercolor in school, in art school. Um, I know there were some instructors that, you know, re were excellent at watercolor, but I, I don't. It wasn't something that I, I remember like learning. I think it was just something by trial and error and and looking at, at, at how other people did it, you know, looking at yeah. masters, you know. Yeah, yeah. Who did, who was, uh, when you were in art school, did you discover people in art school that you didn't know before? Because I wish that in art school, I've often said this, that, you know, somebody had turned me on to uh, drawers like, like say, uh, Goya's etchings or something, um, instead of, uh, right. I, I, you know, I, I wish, uh, but then again, that wasn't, it wasn't that kind of an art school. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was, um, you know, they were still doing wax mechanicals and, uh, you know, they only had one illustration course, and, uh, that kind of thing. But, uh, but, you know, I wish that someone had, had, had taken me aside and says, you know, uh, Mark Drucker is brilliant, but you really ought to look at, uh, you know, at this collection of Goya's etchings or these, uh, um, you know, these drawings by uh, these etchings by Picasso, say, or whatever, you know. Did you learn about those in school or did you kind of come across some of it? I mean, um, for sure, some of it, because um, we had a, a history of art um, class, which, um, you know, in an auditorium where you watched slides and of oh, masters really? and learned about, you know, all these people that you knew nothing about, or at least I knew nothing about uh, before. Um, uh, like Egan, Sheila and- uh, Right. But then other things, you know, you, you pick up on your own. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know, I, I remember seeing, uh, I mean, I remember you going in and buying me a book uh, of Egon Schiele work. Uh, I think we were in Santa Fe or something. And, yeah, yeah. and uh, you just said, you know, you have to have this. You just, there was no question about it. I just went in and you said, here, you got to have one of these. And, uh, and uh, you know, and now since then, I've been like you, I'm on this, you know, I'm this buying spree every time a new show comes up or a new collection, well, I've got to have that catalog or this catalog or whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember having my world rocked by seeing uh, drawings of, of Klimt uh, up in that, uh, that museum up, uptown in New York City. Uh, the Neue Gallery? Yeah, yeah, right. I don't know how to say it, but um, there was a show there. And I remember walking up in the snow, coming into the city on a bus, um, and seeing that 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 show by myself, and walking away, and everything seemed to have changed. I said, "God, I just you know, I just don't know how how you can look at that and not want to draw better and differently." And uh, and uh, those I remember, you know, there's not a whole lot of those kind of moments in one's life when you do this every day that really kind of are a, a kind of paradigm shift in how you perceive 
uh, uh, you know, the, the act of making marks on a picture on, on a piece of paper, but that was one of them. Mm. I wish I had, uh, I, uh, uh, well, no, go ahead. Are there any other questions uh, besides your pedograph questions? Because you might want to just kind of tag off with me and go ahead and answer those fucking questions now. Well, someone's asking us, um, if, do we ever use old fashioned dip pens for line work? The quality of them has dropped too. Um, ah. I, I use dip pens um, uh, in addition to the rapidograph, um, uh, but not for my primary drawing. Um, I haven't really noticed the, a big change in the quality. Um, I don't know about you, John, you, you use dip pens sometimes? Not anymore. Uh, while we're talking, I'm going to show a couple of. I'm yeah, going to yeah. show some some sketchbook stuff. Uh, um, just what these are. What these sketchbooks look like. There, there's. I'll try to find some drawings that are right side up. Um, and not anymore. I used to. You know, I used to uh, just because mostly because the ink was waterproof. You know, when you had to use waterproof Higgins ink and you had to use dip pens all th low those many years ago, and. Uh, um, and I, uh, uh, and I, I remember I used a hunt 22 B or something and I wound up, you know, making it look like a mechanical pen. Uh, I would just, I would, I would force it into making it look so mechanical and stuff that it just was silly. I wasn't getting any of the, any of the fluid, the, uh, the, the, the fluid line work or the tapered lines or that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I wanted to show these, uh, I wanted to, I thought maybe I should show some of these. These are these are drawings done um, at, at, at meetings and things, and there's a oh. lot of them. Uh, and uh, we don't have time to go over all of them, but if anybody uh, ever wants to come by and you know page through a pile of, uh, uh, of drawings done at, uh, well, frankly, let's go ahead and say it. It's, they're done at AA meetings. They're, they're, they're what happened after I stopped drawing at bars and started drawing at AA meetings. Um, and, uh, you, um, I mean, on that subject, did you, do you notice a difference at all in your drawings? I mean, you know. Uh, oh, yeah, no, uh, you know, sometimes because I look back on the drawings I did um, on the back of napkins and things, and, um, and I am struck by a certain, I don't know, a certain, I, 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 a certain lack of uh, a certain freedom that I can't get to that easily um, in terms of uh, uh, I, I, you know, I would stand up at a bar or sit in a corner and do those drawings. And I do know that there was a certain time when, you know, when, when uh, I wasn't as, I wasn't as, I don't know, controlling or I, I wasn't as, I, I wasn't thinking so much about rules or, or space or, or proportions and that kind of stuff. I can still get there. And I do get there now, but there was a period where um, I worried about not being able to get to that place again. Right. Um, uh, you know, not that it was anything uh, exalted to begin with, but, you know, um, I know Tom Waits when he got sober, he uh, he said something about that. He said I was uh, he said, uh, you know, he didn't know whether he'd still have, you know, whatever it was that he had. And also he was known his whole persona was that of a, of an, of a you know, of a bar. Uh, fly type of a thing, and he said, "I just was worried that I'd be uh, that I'd always be perceived as that guy, the guy in the funny hat, you know, the bowler that I used to wear or something." And so he stopped. But then, you know, when he stopped wearing that hat, and you know, and also, you know, metaphorically stopped drinking. He uh, he uh, uh, not metaphorically, he did stop drinking, but it was the same sort of thing. That funny hat was what you know was a persona. Um, but yeah, you do worry about that. Um, I do. I did. Um, but uh, you know, I just don't have the I don't have that option, so yeah. Right. I don't know, but right. Um, let's see, Edward Flynn, come on, admit it. How much did Mad Magazine greats like Wally Wood, Jack Davis, and Al Jaffe influence you? Um, that I I never was influenced by Al Jaffe. God bless him. I know he's still alive and he's wonderful, but I've I never looked at that stuff and said, oh, I want to draw like that. I'm not, I'm not familiar at all with Wally Wood's work. I know his name, um, uh, but Jack Davis, yes, was, yeah. uh, you know, was, uh, was a touchstone for many of us. 
Yeah. Didn't you go down and receive an award from Mark Trucker just before he died or something? From, from Jack Davis. From Jack Davis. Yeah. What was that all about? Um, they had me come down to, to speak at um, um, in, uh, in, uh, in Georgia, um, the Lamar Dodd School, um, part of the University of Georgia. And uh, every year, I don't know if it's every year, but they would give out an award uh, and have, have, you know, fly a person down there and kind of wine them and dine them. And I mean, it was, it was wonderful. And, and yeah, uh, Jack was still alive. So he came and um, uh, first we, um, I was talking to a class and, um, and Jack came in and, and, and we actually drew together. Drew yeah, the really? Drew, well, drew the students and they were drawing us this kind of, you know, sort of a semi workshop thing after I had shown a bunch of my work. And I mean, he couldn't be more gracious. He, he was just a sweet, a sweetheart of a guy and a real Southern gentleman. Really? And, um, and really complimentary to me. And, I, you know, it was incredible. And then, then I did the big talk that night, you know, in the auditorium. And he was there in the front row with his, with his wife and stuff. And they had a dinner um, afterwards. And um, it was just a thrill to, because, yeah, he was a, he was a hero of mine. Um, uh, and, uh, and he couldn't have been a nicer guy. Wow. Uh, I mean, more, I, you know, I was probably a, a bigger fan of Mort Drucker, I guess. Um, I mean, I really idolized Mort Drucker uh, when I was a kid and wanted to draw like that. But Jack Davis was right up there too. And, and um, uh, I always felt Drucker was better, a little better at likenesses, at getting, getting a likeness. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I loved them both. And, um, and I got to meet um, Mort Drucker um, when he received his uh, Hall of Fame Award at the Society of Illustrators, and that and that was, you know, I guess uh, maybe a couple of years before he passed away, and he was pretty up up there in years then. But um, Steve Brodner and I uh, went over to him and and at his table, and and you know, just got to tell him, you know, how much he meant to us, and um, and I remember he kind of took my hand and was nodding his head and. It was, it was a sweet, touching moment, and um, I'm glad I was able to experience that. Uh, um, I wish I, I was able to meet him, um, you know, earlier in, in his life, but uh, I'm grateful to having uh, met him at all. Uh, wow. Yeah, those guys were giant, you know, were giants. Yeah, they uh, were. They were. I mean, what they, you know, the work they did in a, in a, in a, in a, in a month in between issues of Mad Magazine. Um, you know, and not just for Mad Magazine, but for advertising and movie posters and a million other things. I, I just, just, un, you know, and, and to have and to meet someone like like both of them and to have them be gracious, kind, you know, gentle yeah. people, um, because, uh, you know, we've all met. It, it's, you've got to be careful about meeting your heroes. Let's spend some time talking about some of our heroes uh, and what real assholes they turned out to be when we met him in person. Can we do that for a little bit? No, I'm kidding. No. Um, no, there's very few of those. Illustrators are by and large um, pretty gracious, nice folks, I find. Yep. Good, good. Um, Agreement there. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, Patrick Flynn there, that question about Wally Wood and, uh, and uh, of uh, uh, Al Jaffe, no, not, not for me. Were you a big, uh, I, I mean, I, I've admired what Al Jaffe did and my God, what is he now, 105 or something? I, I think he just turned 100. Holy shit. Um, God. Yeah. God I mean, bless him. Um, it, and yes, he's still going. Um, but no, I have to I have to admit as well. I, I, I mean, I, you know, I, I saw Mad Magazine regularly. I had a, a subscription and I did the fold outs and everything, but he wasn't, he wasn't one of those that I felt, you know, that, you know, that's, that's somebody I, I would like to emulate or, or do that kind of work. Um, it was really more trucker. Uh, for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. Um, you know, I, I, uh, I, uh, I, you know, I, I, I kind of 
grew out of that now. I mean, I still recognize it's like, you know, it's like a band or something and say, God, they're, they're great, but they don't, you know, they don't do it for me like like they once did type of a deal. Um, I'll, I'll always recognize him as just, a, you know, a, hell, maybe one of those one of those towering iconic figures. Um, uh, you know, I'll struggle for two days trying to get a likeness and he'll have four pages done of, you know, of five likenesses in each panel or something for a movie or something. It's just, it, you, I can't even get my head around that kind of stuff. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I've, I've, I've kind of grown away from that mad stuff. And, and uh, I admire people now that are, you know, that are a little bit, you know, that, whose work is just more, I don't know, more, what is the word? Um, eccentric and, uh, and not as, uh, and not as uh, uh, adhering to, you know, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the uh, publishing uh, parameters and, and things. Just, uh, I want to see somebody hit a page and just kind of do something surprising, you know? Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. Uh, Barry says he's enjoying this more than Nomadland. Wow, <laughs> that is high praise. Yeah, um, and I'm glad to hear from him. I just saw his wife posted um, her latest profile picture in, uh, on Facebook and she's very, you know, she's as fetching as ever. I don't know how Barry's aging, tech, you know, because it's been a while since I've seen him, but I think he's, he's gone through the, the quarantine and, and relatively fit form. But, uh, you know, but I really would like some sort of uh, social media proof. So Barry, if you get a chance, Post a photo of yourself in, in a hat sometime really soon, okay? And, uh, and good luck on this week's New Yorker cover. I can't wait to see it. And next week's and the following weeks. And, you know, because uh, I'm sure that you've got a few of those stacked up, ready to go. See what you started now, Barry. You see? Yeah, I don't know. Is there, did you hear any bitterness in there or anything? Was that, did I betray any kind of envy or jealousy? No, I don't mean that. He's been very gracious to me. Barry's another one of those guys that I think is kind of an icon, actually. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And he's, and we know him, you know, it's like, isn't that weird? It's like, you know, you, you get, you go to your mailbox, you see the cover and say, I know that guy. And a Pulitzer mm -hmm. Prize winner. A Pulitzer Prize winner. And, um, and, and uh, according to what uh, I'm reading, uh, a, a, uh, the answer to a Jeopardy question. That's right. Right. So. And now mm -hmm. he says he's sorry he piped in. <laughs> We're grateful. Uh, yeah, we're grateful. Um, Patrick Dostein, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. You both have drawn a lot of writers over the years. What writers do you read? Um, well, John's, John's more of a reader. I'm, I'm illiterate, so maybe John can uh, comment <laughs> on that. I am uh, reading... Uh, Oh, what is his name? His father was uh, a famous alcoholic writer. He's, he's a famous British um, writer, uh, a colleague of, of, uh, of uh... oh shit, I can't think of it right now. I'm reading this collection of reviews and essays. Um, Martin Amos. Martin Amos, right, right. Uh, and I, I, uh, I, I love how he Gary, writes. That's from Gary Groff. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. And Barry. And Barry. Why aren't they up here? For fuck's sakes. Where's that interview? Um, but yeah, I'm reading some of that. And I'm, uh, and I'm uh, also reading some, uh, 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 the, the, uh, the man in the, uh, in the blue scarf, the, uh, the same writer that, that talked about Hockney. He's got a, he, he talks about posing for a, uh, posing for a, uh, <clears throat> A picture uh, for uh, Lucien Freud and what it's like to be a model. And he mixes in observations of Freud and conversations as he's sitting there because Freud notoriously works for months and months sometimes on a single painting. And so uh, it's an interesting book um, to, uh, uh, you know, I think I've got, I, I think I, this is betraying sort of high culture aspirations when really I'm just a hack cartoonist. So. Um, but, but yeah, Martin Amos and, uh, and that guy, the man of the blue scarf, which is the name of the painting that, uh, I believe that, uh, that was finally, it's finally the, the name of the painting that Freud gave it when, when he was done. 
Um, Tim Griffin says, I can't, cannot figure out what this woman is holding in her left hand. Um, I it's, believe it's, now you'll be able to tell uh, what this is. It's a pencil. Okay, Tim, all right. I'm only one man. For God's sakes, I didn't, I didn't figure this out ahead of time. Going to be a pencil. Something tubular, apparently. Uh, yes, that's that's uh, that's that's my curse. Uh, Robert was right. Uh, yeah, it all comes back to Festino. Um, you know, because he's, you know, I'm anxious for you to see the book, uh, uh, Coping Skills. I really am, Joe, because of Robert's, you know, choices and some of this stuff. You really have to kind of leave your ego at the door, you know, when you're when you hire someone like him because or you didn't hire him when he did it, because I can't go back to him and say, no, I don't like the way this layout is 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 designed. You know, it's like you can't you can't like if you're going to take him on and 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 uh, and his offer to help me out, you just can't go back and say, well, wait a minute, I want that toy to be bigger. or I don't like this detail that you uh, right. that you featured on this spread or whatever. And it's great because it kind of takes it takes you out of the process. And you know how we all are. I think that a lot of illustrators are like alcoholics. They're they're uh, egomaniacs with self-esteem problems, you know. And yeah. uh, and uh, and this is a way to sort of say, oh God, it's almost was kind of liberating. Like, wow, Robert's making these decisions, and it's you know, and I'm not going to mess. It's out of my hands. I don't well, want to offend him. You know. What was the process for culling the drawings? I mean, you you must have had hundreds of drawings to choose from. How, how did you make those decisions? Did you leave it up to Robert? Did you make the decisions? I made those. I made that decisions, and then and then and then the book. And then we had to call even more because he was he decided not to kind of just throw everything that I chose into that, and he said we got to lose like eighteen drawings, and then I had to go back and say and make that kind of uh, those kind of decisions. And it's weird because you know um, I'm 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 uh, what's difficult is that I am trying to judge things on both, uh, I guess, what, some kind of a humorous level and also as uh, on an aesthetic level. And there are some, there's always drawings that are drawn better, but they're not, they're kind of dumb ideas. And then there's other drawings that are really not well done, but the, but the little, the little gag, uh, in, they don't all have gags, but the little, this little gag on some of them is better. And so, uh, and so again, I, that was a real problem for me. I think at some point I did have to throw them all back to Robert and say, here, I can lose this, this, and this one. But the rest of them, you're going to have to kind of tell me because I'm too attached. You know, I'm the first guy to sort of be self-deprecating about my own work. And then when it comes to saying about what, what don't you want published in the book, I can't decide. It's uh, it's uh, you know, it's embarrassing to admit. But because I'm not, you know, because I can look at every one of those drawings and, and tell you what what kind of problems they have. But at the same time, God forbid, you know, put that one in the book. You know, I'm just it's weird how, how that works. Does that happen with you? Yeah, I can't make decisions. Uh, I drive myself nuts. No. <laughs> this is uh, this is this is that book. Um, speaking of uh, beautiful drawings that uh, are uh, are available now, um, an elegiac look back on uh, uh, an elegant confluence of Joe's uh, uh, childhood, his influences, his love of Italian pop culture, and his early uh, and his and his. Uh, and his uh, and his childhood growing up in Staten Island um, with uh, with first generation Italian parents. I just made that up, but that's close enough, right? Uh, that's very good, very good, and a okay. lot of westerns. Well, oh, right, westerns, right, right. Yeah. God uh, bless so uh, I think maybe you know we got time for a couple, maybe just a couple more questions, and we'll start wrapping this. this yeah. Up. Okay. Um, if anybody has. Uh, um, oh, oh, Robert says there are roughly 65 full drawings in there and a ton of sketches ah, in okay. your book. All right. So my designer has chimed in. Um, yeah. And, um, Claude Haber uh, asks you, did Topor uh, also influence you? Claude Haber, that's, uh, that, he lives in Belgium. Um, I don't know what time it is there. Good morning, Claude. Uh, uh, yes, Roland Topper, it was one of those guys that when I was younger, I wish I had known about him. It wasn't until I got older and seeing him was also, uh, I'll use that term, liberating again, because it was like, oh, he's showing, you know, 
people ev eviscerated or he's having, you know, uh, things plunged into things or, or, uh, or, or, uh, Doing an elegant drawing of a of a, that that is with a with a, a but a, but the figure is bisected somehow or something. And I also really love uh, his work in that it's it's not pretty. He doesn't he doesn't have an elegant cross hatching style. It's very raw and uh, and it's and it's very visceral. And um and I I I loved that. I love that you don't have to kind of you know your line work doesn't have to all be pretty. A lot of it can just can just be you know it's there for a reason and it serves a different purpose and uh, more and more i'm trying to kind of uh it, it get that in my own work and of course i'm never going to be you know roland toper but but uh but yes uh he was a big influence there is a film uh, a, a clip a little video of him in his french flat um starting at like a a, a, a coffee table drinking maybe coffee and smoking a pipe and then he and then and then he gets up and he crosses into a couple of rooms and he's still smoking the pipe and now he's opened a bottle of white wine and he gets down on the ground and uh, with a big piece of paper and a dip pen and a bottle of ink and starts drawing and then when he's done with this drawing of this woman prone on all uh, on her on her hands and knees um, with her I think it is with some with her entrails spilling out or something. He then he takes watercolor and I think in my mind I think it's true that he actually in addition to some watercolor and some and some ink washes he actually uses he dips his his brush into his wine his white wine too and applies color to it. But the whole thing is a little bit of absurdism, a little bit of theater, and a little bit of uh, and a little bit of a uh, you know an insight into the artist at work. Where and I just I loved it. You should try to track that down. I think it's on Vimeo. I think I've seen that. Um, I think I might have sent it you, to you. You probably sent it to me. I, I remember him drawing on the floor. Yeah, yeah, just knocks me out. Just, yeah. you know, um, you know, here I am, you know, nervous about this little thing we're doing and I'm drawing on a table for God's sakes, you know? Um, what about, uh, is John a fan of Tommy Unger's work? Uh, I'm not as much, he wasn't as uh, an influence. Uh, Roland Topra wasn't an influence either until, but he gave me kind of a little bit more permission to, to do what I want to do, I guess. Um, uh, Tommy Unger, I'm just impressed by the fact that he was so prolific. Um, and uh, I saw something with him, a film, you know, that, that documentary where we seem to be putting out a book, you know, more often than Stephen fucking Heller. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, uh, and, um, and, you know, this was after, uh, uh, some some legal or or problems about about because of his you know his 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 erotic drawings uh, that he had done initially. Um, so I do you know I relate to that. I mean um, you know I, I think one of these days I don't think the New Yorker is gonna is gonna uh, renounce my subscription because because I'm drawing this thing here. But um, but at the same time uh, or working for them or whatever. But uh, but yeah you know. I, I admire Tommy Unger um, greatly. Uh, um, although, you know what? I don't think he's somebody I would have really wanted to meet. He doesn't seem to be quite as gracious as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, um, I think, uh, Jack Victor, Davis. Victor met him, um, when he was at the Society of Illustrators. I, I didn't oh, really? know that, uh, yeah, I think, I think Vic had a lunch with him, uh, with a couple of people. I don't oh, know, wow. I don't know if Vic is still on or not, but uh, Gary Groth, you know, uh, our, uh, who's, who's, oh, yeah. who's uh, Fantagraphic, you know, he just published a, a, a book length interview with Tommy Unger. Right. But Gary doesn't judge people like I do. He's just, uh, he doesn't have, he's, he, he, sus he suspends his judgment and recognizes uh, people for their, you know, their aesthetic accompl accomplishments. I'm all about, you know, would he be a nice guy? Um, would he say nice things about me? Would, um, you know, would he, would he, Cover the check, that kind of stuff. I don't know, something. All right. Yeah. Victor says two lunches and a couple of meetings. All right. Yeah, great. Um, uh, and uh, also Claude says, and Alan Kober. Yes. Um, Alan Kober, I, I, somebody wrote something uh, as when I was posting um, a, a recent drawing where I have a little, little doodle of Alan Kober amongst some of my other influences. And uh, you know, I think I, I wrote to him that, you know, we are all, all of us are under the shadow of him uh, one way or another. Um, all of us contemporary guys that pick up a pen. I know you feel that way, Joe, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he was a huge, huge influence on me. 
he was somebody that I did discover in that short period of art school at Colorado Institute of Art. They, the, the town library, or maybe it was the, uh, the art school itself, had a few illustration annuals. And I remember seeing some of his work and, and, and in a sea of, you know, other beautiful work, but it was work by Bob Peake and Bernie Fuchs and that kind of stuff. And then there were these Alan Cobra pen and ink drawings. And I just zeroed in on those. And I thought, who is this guy? And, uh, you know, I would have not, uh, um, I uh, didn't know about him. Um, uh, and, uh, and that was, so that was kind of revelatory. Did you ever meet him, Joe? Uh, yeah, I met him. I met him a number of times. Um, uh, mostly at the Society of Illustrators and um, once at uh, Illustrators Workshop that they did in New York. That was the first time I, I actually met him. Um, yeah. But I heard him give a talk before that at the Society when um, you know, their lecture series that they, uh, that they did. And, um, you know, he brought a, he brought a stack of his um, hand-bound sketchbooks. You know, he would have these these sketchbooks handmade um, for him uh, that uh, look like Bibles, you know, they were, wow. like, you know, like leather bound. Um, yeah, amazing, just brilliant, brilliant artist. Um, I think a master of, uh, you know, 20th century uh, illustration. And we were lucky enough, right, along with Barry to be, uh, to be invited over um, uh, to uh, to uh, his wife's uh, house uh, uh, by Leslie, um, his daughter, and uh, got to see a lot of those originals uh, and, and, and meet um, Carol, right? Wasn't that amazing? Were you with us that day? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There. It, uh, yeah, that, um, that, that's a memorable day for sure. Yeah. Uh, Ellen, Ellen, his wife, Ellen, very graciously... Uh, let us go through uh, a lot of that stuff. She was really, really patient about that, you know, because we were all there. We were all sort of chatty and talking and being good company. And then stacks of his work started coming out and we all just shut up and grabbed us, each grabbed a stack and, you know, sat there with our mouth open, going through drawing after drawing after drawing. And, you know, and we, we couldn't, uh, we weren't, uh, we stopped being good company for about an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. oh, I could have spent a month there. Yeah, I know. Well, anyway, uh, how are you feeling about what you're doing there? Uh, this drawing? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not nuts about it, but I'm, I'm maybe starting to- it, Maybe shift it up a little so we could see the bottom. Sure. sure. Just tell me where, what you can't see. Can yeah. you see everything? Uh, the foot's being cropped off a little at the bottom. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, I mean, it is what it is. It's not, um, I, if I had more time, um, I, I kind of rushed through this thing, of course, just to try to show a little bit of everything. And I don't know who's, you know, this is very inside baseball stuff. I don't know who really likes to watch this process, but, uh, um, and, and I was, you know, skeptical about that. It's a lot to ask people to say, well, stick around while we, you know, talk about pen nibs. And I, you know, slap some, some lines and stuff on a, uh, on a, on a, on a, on a, on a piece of paper, but, um, but this is, you know, this is what I do uh, when I'm not doing assignments. I do it a little smaller. I do it a little slower, a little more deliberately. And, and without uh, someone distracting you constantly. Without so that, well, no, it's great to have you do this. I also, you know, just if, if we're going to get frank about it, I don't, uh, I, I do more, I do much smaller uh, penises. This is just, um, I'm playing to the crowd here, as we say in show business. Yeah, you well, know. You, did, you did get a number of requests, uh, penis requests. So. Yeah, I know, I know. And, you know, it's funny, they're mostly coming from like, from like 50 year old women. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, when I, when I, when I announced this thing, it's like, and they're all like, you know, uh, my God, it's been it's been so long. Please draw, uh, and you know you can see this one from the cheap seats. So um, uh, if you're on your phone, you can still enjoy that. I guess I don't know. Um, I, you know, I'm a people pleaser. You know, I, I'd you like are. to. You are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's say one final question here. Victor Victor says um, to both of us. Uh, so when do you call it quits on a piece? Both of you have the discipline to know when something is finished. Or uh, should, may, I think that yeah. should be the quest, a question, actually. Vic. Do both of you have the discipline to know when something is finished? Yeah, right. Uh, how about you, Joe? I mean, you're, you, you, you never seem to overdraw anything. And, I, and I, I don't know how you stop when you stop. 
but um, but is that something intuitive or what? Well, it's a combination of um, yeah, intuitive, but also laziness. I think uh, I I I don't like overworking things. I'm kind of uh, like a less is more kind of kind of uh, philosophy, and um, uh, and I just I don't know I. I just feel it's a, it's enough. I think I said what I need to say with this piece, and um, I'm going to call it quits before I blow it, before I ruin it, because I don't right. want to start it all over again. Um, yeah. You can always add to a piece, but you can't take it away, at least not when you're working like this. So, um, right, uh, yeah, that's you know, I, I, I'm not always successful at it. I mean, you know, I, I overwork things sometimes. And, or not, not that I see, like, honestly, that's, that's one of your, that's one of the, you know, that's one of the things that I grew to be your work way from the beginning. You seem to have a sense of, you know, a kind of a, a kind of sense of proportionality saying that, you know, I've done enough with this. I can walk away from it. And uh, I think a lot of my stuff uh, comes, uh, a lot of my problem comes from insecurity. I, 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 I'm not kidding about that people pleaser thing. I think like, well, people aren't, don't think they're getting enough. You know, if I stop too early, just, you know, there's not enough noodling. I've got to put in, you know, everything from, uh, uh, from uh, shoelaces uh, to- give, uh, give them their money's worth. Yeah, I, I really do feel that way. And it's, and it doesn't always sur- suit the drawing. When I, when I go through illustration annuals, I, I flip through them uh, and, 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 and what stops me are the ones that are undercooked. Um, that's what I want to stop and look at. And every time I, I, I look at that stuff and I, and I say, I, you know, I, I, I say, I've got to do this. I've got to just, um, if I, this is the, this is the way, I, this is the work that I love. Remember how Jack Dunru would leave things unpainted and, uh, you know, and just have the line work there or, uh, or Victor has, has those same kind of qualities sometimes where he knows how to concentrate the line and the color and the rest of it is just this lovely scribbly intuitive sort of stuff. Um, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I'm not good at that. Um, so I don't know, uh, Victor, um, I, I heard you address that question on, on, uh, Giuseppe, uh, uh, his podcast recently. And, uh, and I guess it's something we all struggle with, uh, two things that we all struggle with are, uh, are how to get that rough sketch, maintain some spontaneity in a, in a final piece of art and also, um, how to, uh, how to know when to stop drawing. I've often said that what I need is an assistant or, a, or someone here, actually not even an assistant. Because when I think of an assistant, I think of like some lovely young uh, person here that would, uh, you know, they'll share my space and help clean up the place now and then and maybe, you know, help me hook up this kind of stuff for technically because I don't know what I'm doing. Here's the phone and here's how to work the computer and that kind of thing. What I really need is a big, burly, ugly man um, who lurks behind me and puts his fat hands on my shoulders and reaches over and grabs my my wrist and pulls it away from my drawing and says you're done you're done um because i i I can't do that myself as often as i'd like i've ruined countless drawings by overdoing it over coloring over drawing superfluous stuff and on that little note of self-loathing and 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 uh and uh and frustration uh maybe we are done i don't know yeah, well, I think that that drawing looks terrific. I mean, I know it's not easy uh, uh, drawing under under pressure. Um, I, I, I'm sure I couldn't do it. And uh, oh, you glad you were the one that uh, that was yeah. doing this. And, we still uh, don't know whose idea this was, do we? Somebody just volunteered us. <laughs> uh, you know, I just got an email saying, "Okay, you're going to be drawing and talking to Joe for the." I don't. What the, what the fuck? It's like I have you know I have no autonomy over my own. Life. I was just. I've been worrying about well, it forever. This the the this really is about um, your new book. So we're promoting your book, Coping Skills, and um, mm-hmm. available available for pre order from Fantagraphics and also from um, Golden uh, Golden Notebook here in Woodstock. In support Woodstock. your local independent bookstores and support Fantagraphics and uh, and uh, you can also while you're there, you know. Get a copy of Fistful of Drawings. Um, you know, when you go to ad- Amazon and you say, and that you buy something and they say, many people who bought this also bought this. Yeah. That's uh, many people who, who, uh, who have bought um, uh, a Fistful of Drawings are yeah. also probably pre-ordering coping skills. Yeah. Fistful of Drawings came out a couple of years ago, but I think there's still some copies available. And 
uh, also from Fantagraphics. And um, thanks, uh, oh, it was an L's idea apparently. <laughs> oh, oh. Anyway, thanks to everybody who, um, who commented and asked questions. I'm sorry, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. So I'm not good at, uh, you know, reading, reading these things quickly. And, um, but I think we covered a lot of ground here and, uh, and got to watch John do a beautiful drawing. And, um, and I, you know, uh, what do you think, John? Are we done? Well, I, I yeah, I, I'll, I'll go as long as anybody wants. But if the, if the oh, questions have stopped, well, John, John wants to keep going. So I'm, uh, I'm going to beg off. <laughs> you what? I'm going to beg off and you can, uh, you can keep going. You can keep drawing. Um, um, uh, all right, we're going to have somebody come in here and, 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 uh, and shut this down. I'll, I'll just keep going until... And uh, maybe we can do some elegant fade of me sort of like, you know, pathetically overdoing this alligator. Um, somebody, somebody grab John <laughs> by the yeah. shoulders. Where's that big guy? Come up and stop me. for God's sake. Yeah. Stop before you draw again. As we watch in silence. Okay. <laughs> 